So the recent movement is self-confidence, confidence in one's self. Now we're often told to lead a healthy lifestyle for ourselves because it will make us happier, it will enrich our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. But more importantly than that, we also do it for the people in our lives. We do it for our close relationships, our family, our friends. And because of that, we're still doing it for ourselves. We're building a healthy lifestyle because it will make us happier. But in the same way, it will help build much stronger relationships with those in our life. Because when we're in a good place, we are able to give more. What should we eat for suhoor? Now, for me as a dietitian, the suhoor meal is the most important meal in Ramadan for you. So what should you eat during this meal? Um, the reason why this meal is important is because it's the source of energy uh, for your body throughout your fasting period. So you need to make sure that this meal is rich uh, in all the macronutrients and the proteins and carbohydrates and the vitamins and minerals to give you enough energy to last during your fasting hours. Not only that, it is one of the meals that will prevent you from feeling nauseated or having headaches throughout the fasting period. So what should you consume in your suhoor meal? One important factor is to make sure that you have complex carbs in your suhoor meal. So what do we mean by complex carbs? Complex carbs are carbohydrates that are rich in fiber, that are slowly digested by your body to give it sugar in a slow motion. So you don't want to eat something that is rich in simple carbohydrates or simple sugars and have your blood sugar peak and then go down again and make you feel hungry. No, and, and as an alternative, you want to make sure that you are eating something that is rich in complex carbs and your body takes plenty of time to digest it and give your body plenty of sugar slowly throughout your fasting period. So examples of um, complex carbs are uh, brown rice, um, brown pasta, you can have um, beans like chickpeas, fava beans, uh, and so on. So these are very good sources of complex carbs. Not only, uh, not only that, the chickpeas and the fava beans um, and the beans are actually also high in proteins and vitamins and minerals. So an example would be having um, chickpeas uh, for your suhoor. Um, and in addition to it, adding a source of dairy, like a cup of yogurt or a cup of laban. Make sure that your yogurt or laban is low in fat and not have anything that is high in simple sugar or flavored yogurt. Um, another example is adding um, to your rice a source of protein like a piece of chicken, um, fish, um, a meat and so on. Um, I can give you a guide of using um, my plate method. So this plate up here is an example of a healthy plate where it helps you divide your portion, ensuring that you're getting all what you need from the carbohydrates, the healthy proteins and um, vegetables. Now, make sure you add a source of vegetable to your suhoor meal, such as um, lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes, and make sure they are fresh. This will make sure that you're getting enough of water um, to keep your body hydrated during your fasting period. So after the break, I will tell you more about what a healthy suhoor uh, would look like and what kind of snacks or beverages you can add to it to make it even uh, more rich with your vitamins. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. So what else can we have for suhoor? Um, a very nice meal would be oatmeal. Oatmeal is very rich in fiber and is one of the most complex carbohydrates that can give you a lot of vitamins and minerals and is very slow in digestion. 
So oatmeal can be prepared um, with milk or with even yogurt. So you can choose a low-fat yogurt or an almond milk, cow-based milk, whichever one you prefer, and add the oat to it. Um, another thing you can add to your oatmeal is um, uh, chia seeds. Now you can soak the chia seeds in your milk or in your yogurt overnight if you prefer, or like for two hours, that would help in its digestion. Um, and this will also add a very good of a source of fiber to your meal. Not only fiber, it is actually rich in antioxidants and is very good for your digestive system. Now to boost up the suhoor meal, you can add um, a portion of fruit to it. So what do I mean by that? You can get a banana, for example, half a banana, slice it up and add it to your oatmeal. Now this way, if you go back to the, to the plate method that I've um, told you about, um, you can see that you've added your source of carbs and you've made sure that this source of carbs is complex. You've added your source of dairy, where the yogurt or the milk comes in, and you've also added a very good source of fruit, which will help you stay um, hydrated and stay full throughout your fasting period. What should you avoid during suhoor? Now, make sure that you don't have any canned food, neither canned beans or canned fruits or canned vegetables because this would be really rich in salt and having this much salt during your suhoor will leave you feeling thirsty. Another thing you should not have during suhoor is the fried foods that you've leftovers of the fried foods that you've had for iftar. These are very high in fat and could also leave you feeling very thirsty throughout the day. So don't reach out for those fried kubbas or the fried sambusas during your suhoor. You're only gonna regret that during the day when you're fasting. And remember me when this happens. Um, what else can we do during suhoor? Make sure you don't add lots of um, spices like peppers. You can actually add cinnamon to your food if you wish to your oatmeal and this will help in regulating your blood sugar levels, will give you some nice taste and twist to your meal and will not leave you feeling thirsty. Another option would be um, adding eggs to your suhoor. Now, a lot of people come to my clinic thinking that eggs is a bad idea for suhoor. It's actually a very good idea for you to have eggs for your suhoor, making sure that you don't again add salt and black pepper to it. So don't be afraid to take um, eggs. You can twist it up by adding um, a slice of toast that is high in fiber, a whole grain toast. Um, how about we make a whole grain toast and add avocado to it so you can make avocado toast and, add, and boost it up with the protein by adding eggs to it. So don't, don't feel like there's anything specific that you should have as long as you are making your meal balanced, making sure that you're adding a variety uh, and thinking about your food groups, the carbohydrates, how to make them healthy, your, your protein, where you're getting your protein from. This will make sure that you are um, eating a healthy uh, meal. So don't stress your yourselves. And if you're feeling the need for a taste of sweets, reach out for your dried fruits. Dried fruits are very rich in fibers and fibers are very important for this meal as I mentioned to you before. So probably dried apricots, um, dates, uh, that would help you uh, feel the taste of sweetness in addition to making you um, stay hydrated, in addition to giving your body um, vitamins and minerals and lots and lots of antioxidants. So hope you, hope, hope you found those tips helpful and when you prepare your suhoor meal today, remember those tips, think wisely and enjoy it. And I wish you a very healthy Ramadan and suhoor. Thank you very much. So we've already established how leading a healthy lifestyle is key in supporting and supplementing our relationships with those in our lives. So let's have a visualization session. 
Let's imagine that you are currently living from the moment you wake up until you go to sleep the healthiest life that you could possibly live. And with that, being happy in who you are as an individual with your own body, your mind and your soul, you are then able to give much more to those in your life. So imagine what a day like that will look like. And after that visualization process, manifesting that into reality will only be that much easier.